Hey, what's up guys? Drew here with another review and uh, I'm excited about today's review. I know that last time I did a review, I did it on this LT Wright uh, GNS here and uh, I really loved this knife. And while I was doing this, I showed you another knife that I had gotten from LT that I was excited to do a review on. And that is what I've got in my pocket today, which is the Great Plainsman. Okay, this one is in D2. Um, really cool little knife. Uh, it's actually not not on purpose, but I ended up getting the exact same handle material, and I ended up really liking it. So, anyway, um, this knife for me is kind of like the do everything. So not only can you EDC it in your pocket uh, with the little Kydex sheath that I have, but you could wear it on your belt with the sheath that it comes with. Uh, this sheath was pretty stiff when I got it. I hit it with uh, some oil and some beeswax in the beginning, softened it up, made it perfect. Um, but anyway, you can there's a bunch of different ways that you can use this But for me, it's perfect for everyday carry because it's it's a good size It's not too big to keep in your pocket and it's also pretty useful outdoors Obviously, you're not going to be batoning logs or anything with this but for fire starting and for most camp tasks uh, for food prep um, This thing is really really good and I think it's like an ideal size I've got a few other knives for size comparison that maybe I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but what I wanted to do, since I view this as an EDC and an outdoors knife, is do a variety of those things today. So I got a bunch of stuff to cut up that's what most people use for their EDC. Uh, I'll cut up some other stuff that maybe isn't so uh, common for EDC. And then I'm going to do some more outdoor camp type tasks with it and uh, maybe even make a fire here. So I wanted to just show the versatility in this knife so let's start out um, right now it's fairly sharp um, I did sharpen it but I've been using the heck out of this thing I've been carrying it a lot so um, it's been a couple weeks since I touched it up on a strop or anything so it's not like super razor sharp but it's still still pretty good and it's gonna cut through um, you know look let's be honest most of you guys are just using your knives for boxes um, a lot of people opening up packages, especially, you know, in today's world, there's a lot of uh, a lot of package opening. So that's what gets, you know, uh, that's what a lot of these knives get used for, uh, generally speaking. So I figured we would do a little bit of box cutting. And no, this is not dangerous. I'm cutting away from my legs. So all of you guys that uh, want to yell about knife safety can do it to somebody else. Um, so anyway, um, this thing, uh, great for cardboard. Uh, of course, any knife, when you cut a bunch of cardboard, especially when you're cutting through tape and labels and stuff, it's going to get a bit of, uh, going to get a bit of glue on there. And you can see that's starting to build up quickly, but that's really pretty much any knife. Um, anyway, you can see guys, this thing holds up pretty well to cardboard. Um, now, this is D2, it's not CPM D2, it's just, you know, run of the mill D2, but LT does a good heat treat on it. Um, is this gonna hold an edge, you know, like M390 or even S30V? No, it's 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 not gonna do that. Um, it's, you know, will it be easier to touch up than those? Yes, yeah, it will. Um, is this stainless? I think it's classified as like a semi-stainless, um, so, you know, you really don't have to worry much about rusting with this, but it will, it can corrode and, and take a patina if you're, you know, if you're just really reckless with it. Uh, so anyway, boxes, it does well. Obviously, you know, most of this, like I said, most of this stuff, guys, is like, you know, if your knife can't do this, kind of what is the point of owning it? If it can't, you know, hold an edge through, uh, through just some minor stuff like this. Like I said, it's been a couple weeks since I touched this thing up and it's still still going through stuff pretty easily. I can tell by feeling it that it's lost a little bit of that initial bite that it had. Um, but that being said, it's still it's still a good uh, a good working edge. And that's mostly what you know you end up being concerned with. Most people aren't sitting there trying to keep their knives like absolute razor blades all the time. Most people, um, from what I have found in my sharpening business, will 
send their knives in when they lose the working edge, okay? When it's really just gets really dull. Um, and D2 is pretty good at that. Uh, it'll hold a good working edge for a decent amount of time. So, you know, I think, uh, I think D2 is definitely acceptable for this kind of stuff. Um, just going through some of this sisal rope here. Don't have the best cutting board, so I'm missing some spots because it's uneven. But, you know, this is a good little slicer. It's fairly thin behind the edge. Um, so I haven't had any issues with that. Um, yeah, there's like a divot in this wood and I can't quite get it. There we go. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm definitely a fan of the Great Plainsman. I think for EDC, it's just right um, as far as a fixed blade goes. I have carried knives um, like uh, the SE3 in pocket um, with this clip here. And obviously you got about that much sticking out of your pocket. With the Great Plainsman, I've really only got about that much coming out of the pocket, I believe. So it's uh, to me, it, it's a lot easier to carry than something like this. And when, when you take this out, sometimes people can get weird. And I've had like a lot of comments when this thing's hanging out of my pocket, like, uh, Oh, what's that? Or, you know, you know, what, what are you planning on doing? And, you know, just people are weird that aren't knife people, so they don't get it. But this thing is pretty small and unassuming. You can see when it's in my pocket that, you know, it's really pretty unobtrusive. Uh, and this is just a little Kydex sheath that I had left over from another knife. And uh, I just kind of stuck it in some boiling water and reformed it to this. It's not perfect. Obviously, I have it set up for left-hand carry and... You know, I don't really care about how it looks. I care how it works. And then I bought this Ulti clip for another knife um, that I had. So anyway, those Ulti clips are great, by the way. Um, so it just kind of sits like that. Easy to draw, easy to put away. I got good retention. I put a little swell on there for the thumb, but I don't really need it. Um, so it's not perfect because in all reality, I would want this a little farther in because it kind of leverages the knife a little bit, but I'm not worried about it. That's that's not like a review on the knife necessarily. It's more on, on my carry setup that I've got that hasn't isn't perfect, but I still like it well enough. So um, suffice to say that EDC stuff, this is a good a good blade and really nothing that you gotta, you know, nothing that I would say um, you'd have to be worried about carrying this thing every day. It's going to have plenty of edge retention. It's going to have, you know, plenty of uh, concealability if you're worried about that. Um, but then, if you go to use this thing for outdoors, to me, uh, it's a great option. It's just big enough to where I can get a full grip on the thing. Just a touch coming out at the, the back end here. Um, and I wear size XL gloves. Uh, you get right up on the edge of this blade. Now, one thing I'll say, minor criticism, is the edge here where your finger goes and up here where this little thumb ramp is where you would kind of use for pushing on hard cuts. They were a little, those edges were like um, a little sharper than I would like. Um, I get this part being um, sharp because you use a uh, ferro rod with that, but down here and up here, I did take uh, some fine, like 600 grit paper and just kind of, just round those off just a touch to get rid of the, the sharpness on them. Not that it was bothering me that bad or cutting me or anything like that. It wasn't like dangerous, but I just preferred it to have a little bit extra um, rounding, I guess I would say. So one of the nice things about a smaller blade like this is the control that you get especially for notching and things like that. You can really, really work this uh, into some finer spots and really get some, some controlled cuts on there. Now this is a hardened piece of maple that's been sitting for like a year in my garage. So this thing's like absolutely rock hard. This is not a, a green piece of wood. It's just been <laughs> sitting there. So it's probably a terrible example because these things are so hard to carve. Uh, even when they're green, maple's fairly hard. But I'll see if I can make some feather sticks right now on this thing. 
I've made plenty of feather sticks with this knife and I have started a number of fires with it. Let's clear all this crap out of here. Um, look at that. Saving some wood chips for later. Anyway, um, I happen to really like this thing. Like I said, I think it's a, a good like uh, all around knife. If you want something small that you could carry, but also something that if you were, you know, in the woods, like you wouldn't feel like you were, you know, kind of up the creek without a paddle, so to speak, because this thing can more or less do it all. Um, I think I've got some pictures on my Instagram of, of some curls and stuff that I've done with this. Uh, and it's it's been been a good performer for me. It has taken a slight patina, but I think that's from uh, I tried doing like one of those, you know, the hot vinegar bath on it because it came out so well on my other LT, the uh, next gen and A2. So here we go, getting some good curls. Um, when I say good curls, I see a lot of guys make like these big long curls. Uh, when I'm talking about curls I'm usually talking about really small ones that will easily take a spark so you need both any any knife can make the, the big ones that's fairly easy but sometimes making these fine ones is a lot more difficult you know small enough that it'll take a spark that I don't have to use tinder from like a kit or you know uh, like an artificial tinder I want I want to be able to make that every time on my own so that when I practice curls I generally practice these because the other ones are pretty easy. So I want something small like this that has a potential to, to take a spark. Now, one thing I want to uh, show you also is the sharpness of this spine. Um, and <laughs> this is one thing I like about LT is every one of his knives is going to be ready to do this. So I got my ferro rod here. <laughs> Man, you know, even this little knife throws some serious sparks. Um, which I think is just cool. Actually, what, here, let's do this. See if I can start something here. I'll cut a little piece of this, this little rope here. Okay, and then you fray this stuff up, and this can be some really good tinder. A little trick for these is just twist them in the opposite way that they're twisted, and everything comes right apart. This stuff makes a great little tinder bundle. All right, so uh, I was gonna do this whole thing in, in just kind of one take, but what I'll do is I'm gonna change the camera uh, so you guys can, I'm gonna show you a little trick for striking a ferro rod that I think makes it way easier and you have, it usually takes way less strikes, it's more accurate, and uh, so your ferro rod and everything will last longer. So. Actually, so let me just move this camera here and we'll check that out. Okay, so here's my little trick. Normally people are trying to strike like this and shoot them into the bundle or they hold down the bundle and do this and it ends up beating everything up or compressing it so that it doesn't work as well. Uh, and I cannot remember the guy's name where I saw this. I cannot take credit for this idea. But what I do is I plant my knife right there Okay, and then you can get the whole length of the ferro rod in use, and you can get some good pressure on it. And it's almost always a one-take jake there. So hold the knife down on the bundle and pull the rod across. So as you can see, this thing's nice and sharp, works great. Get you some close-ups of this thing here. See some of the glue on there. Well, you can see all the grind lines are super clean, super even. Really like this thing. So, anyway, that's that. Oh, I'll show you the sheath while we're at it. It's a JRE Industries sheath. So, you know, they're always quality. Like I said, this one's a little darker because I've used uh, some Ovenovs LP, their leather protectant on there, which is like a beeswax and propolis kind of mixture so anyway uh, there's there's that like this thing a lot now let's move the camera back and we'll do our word of the day 
our word of the day today, and I, I got my notebook with me every morning. I, I use this notebook to uh, I write down the, the verse of the day and then kind of what I'm just thinking about it and all that stuff. So I figured I would just read this scripture off of here. So today's verse in my Bible app was uh, Psalm 100 and verse 3. And it says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And so what uh, what this really kind of spoke to me this morning as I was reading it was the, the sheep of his pasture part. There's other verses in the New Testament where, you know, Jesus is talking about us and he says that, that he is the shepherd and we are the sheep and the sheep know his voice. And, um, you know, there's other verses that talk about how, how he leaves the 99 to find the one sheep that's gone astray and that how uh, he leads us beside still waters and about how he brings us to green pastures and we don't have to worry when we go through the valley of shadow of death because his rod and his staff comfort us. And those are all attributes of a shepherd. A shepherd is somebody that, that looks after the flock and that defends the flock with his life and uh, you know wants the best and protects and leads them to good places. And so that just spoke to me today. I just want you to know that you know sometimes we can feel far away from God and sometimes God can just seem like like he's way out there and we're here struggling and he doesn't know what's going on. But I just want to encourage you and let you know that, that he does. And uh, even when, when you feel far away from him, he's never more uh, than, uh, you know, than a prayer away. And, and in fact, usually when we think he's farthest away is when he's, when he's there kind of lifting us up the most. So I want to encourage you in, in two things today. Number one, you know, there's a million Bible apps out there. I'm not going to tell you which one to get. I know the one I use is called uh, Takarta Bible, um, and that has a verse of the day feature, and it pops a new one up every morning. So get something like that. Uh, get in the Word every day, even if it's just one verse. Um, you know, get into the Word every day. It's amazing how stuff that was written so many thousands of years ago is still relevant to our lives. So get in the Word, you know, Get, get a, a Bible verse a day, journal about it. It really helps you to kind of um, put down on paper and kind of realize what the verse is talking about. Uh, and I also just want to encourage you to, to know that, that the Lord is a, is a good shepherd and that he's not going to leave you or forsake you and that he's always there for you, even when you feel like you're, you're in the midst of, of a terrible spot. And, and I'll just share something with you guys. Uh, Last several months have been really hard for my family and I. Um, my father-in-law, who I was close to, uh, he he passed away uh, on my birthday um, in in mid-January, and uh, so we've been dealing with that. We've been dealing with all the stuff that was going on. Right before that, the transmission of my truck died, and so that was this this huge cost that we weren't expecting because at that same time my wife was in between jobs and. And she had all that stress, plus her dad, plus the truck, plus my dog was on his deathbed. I, I kind of tried to make a joke out of it, and I said, you know, if my wife ended up leaving me, I would have had like the perfect country song. Um, but, but anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I've been going through a bunch since probably November. Um, and God's, God's been good to me the whole time. All these things were going wrong, but the entire time I knew I had a good shepherd that loved me. And that was looking out for me and I knew that I could go to him with with any of my troubles and and I did and uh, and and God got me through it and I can still say that God is good no matter no matter what goes on so I just want to encourage you guys today I know a lot of us are going through rough times some of you because of the you know because of the lockdowns and the loss of a job or this or that and there's a million different things that are going on um, but I just want to encourage you and let you know that you got a good shepherd so anyway guys God bless I hope that was for somebody today I will talk to you next time. I've got more reviews and more videos coming, so stick around.